today's video is for day eight in grammar. We'll start with the capitalization section. Today's theme with capitalization seems to be religion. Um, capitalize the names of religions. Buddhism, Christianity, Catholicism would all be capitalized. The first letter would be. Capitalize the names of religious divisions and denominations. For example, Protestant, Methodist, the first letter is capitalized. Capitalize the name referring to a supreme being, God, Heavenly Father. You would capitalize the first letter in those words. You do not capitalize gods or goddesses. However, you do capitalize their names. So you see in the example, Athena was a goddess. Athena is capitalized, but goddess is not. Capitalize the names of religious documents and the names of holy days. They use the example of the Torah. Um, the Catechism would be capitalized. Bible would be capitalized. Uh, and then holy days, Easter, the Assumption, Christmas. Those days are all capitalized, the first letter. And then you capitalize the name of a church group or a religious building. And they give you examples of Shell Beach Community Church. The first letter of each word is capitalized. St. Peter's Cathedral, the um, first letter of each word and the abbreviation for saint uh, are all capitalized. And then for the sample sentence for you to um, mark accordingly, Leonardo da Vinci painted the Last Supper, a scene of Jesus and his followers. Okay, so you're just going to put your underlines under which words you think should be capitalized. And then I'll show you here. Um, so Leonardo da Vinci, if you remember, the, de, and von uh, are not capitalized. So that's why just the L and the V are capitalized, but not um, the D in da Vinci. So Leonardo da Vinci, uh, the, the L and the V are capitalized, painted the Last Supper. Okay, the is capitalized because it's the first word in the Last Supper. And then the L and the S would also be capitalized. And then a scene of Jesus and his followers. Jesus, of course, is capitalized. Next, we have the punctuation section. Some names use a hyphen, and they have um, an example of what a hyphen is. It's just that little dash. Uh, Olivia Newton-John, you would hyphenate her last name. And then sometimes closely related words are hyphenated. And here their example is far reaching and you put the hyphen between the two words. Now for their sample sentence they have Camilla Parker Bowles wore a feather crested hat when she married Prince Charles. There are two areas that are going to need hyphens. The first is Parker Bowles, her last name. You would hyphenate between the two. And then further on in the sentence feather crested you would hyphenate between feather and crested. And of course, you won't forget to put a period at the end of the sentence, correct? All right, under parts of speech for adverbs, this is one of my favorite sections because um, I hear people make mistakes in this area in their speech uh, frequently, so it's kind of fun when you know how you're supposed to do it. Anyways, negative words include no, not, nt, none, never, nobody, nowhere, no one, hardly, and scarcely. There's an important rule kind of tucked in here. Do not use two or more negative words in the same clause. It's called a double negative, and you don't want to do it. You might even want to grab your highlighter pen and highlight that. Do not use two or more negative words in the same clause. The only time that you can is if you're um, using no, as in like, no, he didn't sing well. Then it's okay, um, but that, that's the only time. They have um, some examples here, wrong and right. Wrong, he doesn't sing with nobody, right? If he doesn't sing with nobody, that technically means he sings with anybody, right? So um, if you wanted to stay negative, you would say, he doesn't sing with anybody. Okay. So look at your sample sentence. The toddler won't go anywhere or nowhere. 
without his teddy bear. Well, you've got won't, and an apostrophe T means not, and that's a negative. So you don't want not and nowhere, which is also a negative word, to be in the same clause. So instead, you would say the toddler won't go anywhere without his teddy bear. Okay. If you're not sure if you're going to remember what the negative words are, you can always highlight negative words um, and that will clue you in. Or you can just run your highlighter over no, not, none, never, nobody, nowhere, no one, hardly, and scarcely, and that will also alert you to it. Next section, we have done an assignment like this before. It's looking at prepositional phrases, participle phrases, present tense, and participle phrases, past tense, and being able to recognize them. A prepositional phrase, might want to highlight that, begins with a preposition and ends with a noun or a pronoun. It consists of two or more words, and their example is for Emma and with us. A participle phrase may begin with a present participle, and the example is bouncing a ball. Bouncing is a present participle. A participle phrase may begin with a past participle. The example here is dried and stored, both of which are past participles. Dried is the past participle of to dry, and stored is the past participle of to store. And if you look, both of those verbs have ed endings in their past tense, so those are regular verbs. All right, so they've given you three samples, um, and we're gonna use the symbols again uh, to denote whether it's a prepositional phrase, whether it's a participle phrase present or a participle phrase past. So let's take a look at A. Confined to a small area. The word that um, should clue you in is confined. Confined is a past tense verb. So that tells you you're dealing with a past participle. And if you look at the little explanation, it says you're gonna put a square in the blank if there's a past participle. B, seeing a buddy. You see that ing ending and that alerts you right away that you're dealing with a present participle. So seeing a buddy would be a participle phrase in the present tense. So let's take a look. What symbol shows participle phrase beginning with present? It's a three. And then uh, C is for you. You'll see they've got the preposition for plus the word you. So you know that that's a prepositional phrase that has the diamond shape. So if you want to double check your answers here, you have um, for A is a square, B is three, C is the diamond shape for the different types of phrases. Lastly is the sentence combining. It looks like you have three sentences to combine. Good luck. I look forward to reading them as always. Bye.